This daily grind, I need one wine. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. You know, life can be such a grind at times, and so we're here sharing God's Word with you to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. Every day of my life is such a grind. It's time to grind. So here's the host of the Grind It Podcast, the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. When I started the last podcast, I started off by telling the you, the listeners, that I'm doing something different in this recording just to see what it's like. It's a beautiful day outside, so you, you're going to hear birds chirping. You may hear, hear a car pass by every now and then or a motorcycle. You may even hear a plane fly over because we don't live too far. Well, we're definitely in the flight path uh, from the big jets that, that take off from uh, the airport there uh, at Tyson McGee. Um, but I hope you'll bear with me, uh, bear with the sounds. It's just a beautiful day. Uh, and so I decided to record this podcast outdoors <clears throat> just to change up the scenery a little bit, I guess. And in last podcast, we started Acts chapter 17 and we left with, left off with Paul and Silas and Timothy being in Thessalonica and after they leave Thessalonica, they're going to go to Berea, and uh, the Bereans were some cool people. Uh, the Bereans were some hungry people. They they actually, well, we'll see it here in a few minutes, but they actually loved the Word of God, and they studied scriptures. They didn't just take what Paul said, you know, at his word, which is great. And, and, and if I forget to say this later on the podcast, let me say it now. You know, your preacher, I'm sure, is a great man. And I'm sure he's an honest man. And I'm sure, and I hope, that he would never try to steer you in a wrong direction. But I don't care who's in the pulpit at your church. I don't care how great of a person you think he is or how honest he may be. Never take what he says for granted. Write down the scriptures that he uses. Listen to what he preaches. Listen to what he says. And you, yourself, go pick up your Bible. Pull it up on your electronic device, your phone, your your iPad, your tablet, whatever you use. And you yourself dig into the scriptures to make sure what he is saying is true, that it lines up with the Word of God. And, and let me tell you this, beloved, if it does not line up with the Word of God, get out. Get out as fast as you can. I don't care if your whole family goes there, if your best friend goes there, whoever. If they're not preaching the gospel, if they're not preaching the truth, get out and find you a church that does so back to uh, the the church at Berea or Paul and Silas going to Berea and they're going to start a church there uh, by foot when Paul's leaving Thessalonica to go to Berea it's going to be around a 15 hour trip or so uh, and the reason why I want to point this out is because Paul and Silas is going to be uh, more successful here and they find like I said the Bereans are eager to hear the message about Jesus and they they actually do study scriptures for themselves and 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 what they find out is that paul the words that he is saying is true because uh we learned from the 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 last trip that paul was on and from these other trips that paul's message is is when he goes to these synagogues it's he's using the prophets from the old testament to show that jesus christ is the messiah that they've been looking for and so the Bereans would go back and they would study, study these Old Testament prophets. They would read the scriptures that they had. They would read the Psalms and they would read the minor prophets. They would read uh, the major prophets and they would see what Paul is saying is, is lining up exactly with what the prophets had said. And there's over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about the Messiah, about Jesus. And he fulfilled every single one of them. That is just absolutely amazing. I just don't understand how people can miss that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and that he died on a cross for our sins and he was resurrected to give us hope. I just I just don't get it. So what's going to end up happening in Berea is that some, some of those Jews from Thessalonica, remember they, they went to Jason's house and, and they couldn't find Paul and Silas, so they had taken Jason uh, before the city council and said that he was... Uh, uh, in treason because he was following this king named Jesus and we're supposed to be following the Roman king, right? Caesar. 
And so uh, what's going to happen is a lot of these Jews that were stirring up trouble in Thessalonica are going to come to Berea and, and, and cause trouble for Paul and Silas there. I mean, it's like they can't escape it. It's everywhere they go. It's like, you know, kind of like being, you know, when you're mowing your yard and you 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 mow over that little hole in the ground, what you didn't realize in that little hole was these these wasps called yellow jackets and they, oh man, they hurt so bad and and they, you know, no matter how fast you run, they can fly just as fast and they're just constantly stinging you the whole time as you're trying to get into the house and get away from these, these, these yellow jackets, these wasps. They're just continually stinging. Well, that's exactly what's going on with Paul and Silas. Everywhere they go and everywhere they travel, Jews and, and these mobs that they have stirred up would, would come right along behind them and chase after them and, and it's just like they were you know just stinging them they were a, a thorn in their flesh if you will they would just stir up trouble for Paul and Silas and that's what the enemy does it doesn't matter what kind of good we're doing and how good what you know how how good what we are doing it how good that is the enemy doesn't want that and so he's going to come along and stir up trouble tr to try to ruin your name, to ruin our name, and, and to exaggerate, right, the truth. And so that's what's happening here. It happens again to Paul and Silas here in, in Berea. But Luke does say that many Jews believed, and as did as many prominent Greek men and women. And that, the, the same thing happened in Thessalonica. Luke mentioned that prominent women believed in, in matter of fact it, it, it's kind of like a reoccurring theme that when they go into these places where they have synagogues it, it's prominent men prominent women that uh, are, are obeying the gospel and i want to say this that many, many people have a misconception that the gospel is for poor people because they want to look to jesus for, for hope and you know hope that, the, that jesus is going to get them out of poverty and when we see Jesus in the Gospels, it, it is true that he, he did minister to the poor and the needy, but he, he also ministered to the well-off people, the, the rich and the powerful people as well. And, and here's what I want to emphasize. Everybody, it does not matter where we are on the social ladder, where we're down here or up here. It doesn't matter how much money we have in the bank or how much little money we have in the bank. It doesn't matter if we wear name brand clothes or if we wear $3 t-shirts from Walmart. It, you know, if our hair is dyed blonde when it should be black or, you know, it, it, none of this matters. What matters is we have a soul and every person that's ever walked the face of this earth has a soul and that soul is stained by sin and without the blood of Jesus Christ washing away our sin we can't be saved Jesus is the only way to be saved there is no other name under heaven whereby man can be saved Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no one can come into the Father except through me John 14 verse 6 and I'm sure you can hear the airplane buzzing overhead but that, that's cool the, my point is, it doesn't matter how much money we have. We can't buy our way into heaven. It doesn't matter if we can't, if we don't have any money and we can't even give God a penny. You remember the widow? She gave the two mites. Jesus said that, you know, you got all these rich people going around in the temple and they're dropping all this money into the treasury and, you know, just to hear it jingle. And so, the, you know, the heavier the jingle, you know, they're strutting their stuff. You know, you, you hear how much money I put into the pot. Man, my, my tithe was awesome. Look at me. And this widow lady walks up there and drops in two little, not even a penny. You wouldn't even make a noise when it hit the, the rest of the money. And Jesus said, hey, y'all see that woman right there? She just put in more than all of y'all. That poor woman who dropped two little old shekels in, two little, we call them the widow's mite, two little mites in, didn't even add up to a penny, maybe a half a cent, maybe a penny. She put in more than, than you put in your millions doesn't matter you know why because her heart's right jesus said your heart's not right and that's the point that that's the whole the, the what i'm trying to convey here is that it, it's our heart no matter where we are in life no matter where we are on the social ladder no matter how much money we have in our bank account it does not matter what matters is we have a soul and that soul needs to be saved and without jesus we're not saved but with jesus we are saved
And so the big question is, do you have Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you live for Jesus? Does your life, is it, do you fashion your life around Jesus? Does every decision, decision that you make in life, is it focused and centered around Jesus? The gospel is for everyone, rich and poor, young and old, male and female. So, we're going to come back from break here in just a second. And when we come back from break, we're going to pick up uh, with, with Silas and Timothy uh, how uh, um, they're, going to, they're, going to, they're going to travel to Athens. They're going to get chased out of Berea. Uh, by these people who continually to cause them trouble. So when we come back from break, we'll pick up with that thought, and we'll be right back. This is Ryan Kirst. I'm the student pastor at Partnership Christian Church, and I want to invite you and your family to worship with us this coming Sunday. Check us out on Facebook or YouTube for service times and directions. Thanks for listening to the Grind It podcast. Keep grinding. So, Paul sticks around in Berea for just a little bit. These Jews come along and they, they from Thessalonica, and they find Paul and Silas, and then they start just this troublemaking stuff again. And and so the the Christians are going to uh, help Paul escape, and and they're going to escort Paul all the way to Athens, and then they're going to go back to Berea. And so what happens is Paul ends up in Athens, and he has to wait for Silas and T- Timothy. Uh, to make their way to Athens, and they're going to join back up, and they'll travel around some more. But while Paul is waiting, he just doesn't take a break. He, he, he you know, this will be a great opportunity. This man has been stoned. He's been beaten. He's been being chased from city to city. People are trying to kill him. People hate him, literally hate him, want him gone. And, and you know, this would be a perfect opportunity for Paul to say, you know what, nobody knows me here. I'm just going to hang out in Athens for a little while, and I'm going to rest until Paul, until Silas and Timothy arrive here. But that, that's that's not what he does. I, I just don't. I don't think I, maybe his personality is like mine. It, maybe he just he, he doesn't like to do things like that. Maybe he's just got to be busy all the time. But what what Paul actually does is he is here in Athens. He he walks around. He's he's looking at all the sights and. He sees all these great buildings that, that offer these sacrifices to their false gods. And, and uh, he, he would go to the synagogue and he would speak to the Jews and the Greek proselytes and to the, the, to the, the women that were there. But uh, he, one of the places he would go to in Athens was what we call the Agora or the, the marketplace. It was where people came to shop. It's kind of like us going to our local grocery store or going to our local Walmart, you know, and we would walk in and just start preaching about Jesus. You know, people would think, man, it, this, this person's crazy. But that's exactly what Paul did. He, he would go to where people were. He, he didn't try to avoid people. He went to where people were, people that gathered around, not, not church people, n- not uh, uh, people that were gathering around to hear Jesus. No, he he just went to where people were, were, and he would start to tell them in conversation about Jesus. I mean, you know, it's it's just totally opposite of what we do today. We, you know, we're we're so guilty of, uh, of, of the churches today or Christians today. How we 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 we. If we do anything at all, we you know we might invite somebody to come to church with us. You know we do that Sunday morning thing, and, and hopefully our friend will come along, or hopefully our friend will show up at our you know at our little Sunday morning gig that we have uh, once a week. When th- that's just not the way it was done in, in the Book of Acts when the church was beginning and when it was in its new stages. I mean these these people like Paul and Silas and Timothy they they went to where people were. Uh, that, that's why I, I like, uh, I believe it was the very first episode of The Chosen when, when the scene with Mary Magdalene, I mean, the very first place that we see Jesus show up was in a bar. Are you kidding me? That is so awesome that Jesus showed up in a bar. And I know it's not scriptural. I know that it's not bi- biblically based, but it is the coolest idea because Jesus was at a wedding and his first miracle did take place at a Jewish wedding where those people were getting lit and they run out of wine to get drunk on and Jesus made more wine. But that's another podcast for another day. 
uh, but it is just it's just cool uh, that Jesus and, and the chosen would show up at a bar to meet a woman who needed him, who needed salvation because she had demons that she was demon possessed and he was her only hope. And when we start to see people that way, that our only hope, their only hope is Jesus. And when we start to see people not, you know, is, is what Isaiah says, or, or that when David was being chosen as king, and I believe it was uh, first or second Samuel, uh, he said that God doesn't look on the outside as man does. God looks what what's on the inside. But see, we're so guilty of, you know, we look at somebody and they'll, we'll automatically categorize that person, which is it, it, this, this is not the right thing to do. We need to see a person and see a person as a soul that is in need of a Savior. When we start to look at people that way, as God looks at people, as Jesus looks at people, it'll change the way we live our lives because we'll see opportunities and we pray for opportunities that, that, that you know God puts before us. And I'll just give you an example. I, I, not every day, but a lot of times when I'm, when I'm praying, I pray that God gives me an opportunity or opportunities to share Jesus that particular day because I'm out on a route. I meet a lot of people. I see a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people. And uh, just this week, I, I go to the skate park in Knoxville, uh, and at, at Tyson and, and you know and I skate some and uh, they have a, a of all things a porta potty there so you know we can use the bathroom and I pull up in my little Davy truck and and I get out and I go to the porta potty take a leak right and uh, uh, it just so happened I'm standing there and I'm taking a leak and I noticed there's graffiti all all around me in this porta potty pretty cool looking graffiti but somebody had written on the vent pipe uh, it says no God no masters and as a vendor i had to take advantage of that opportunity i was like I, there's no way i'm walking out of this porta potty without adding to this graffiti and so uh let, let me share with you what i wrote on underneath what they said on in the porta potty i said wrong exclamation point Sin is your God and Satan is your master. And also, when they said uh, no God, no masters, uh, they did an upside down cross. Well, when I said wrong, sin is your God and Satan is your master, I put a, a cross that's right, right side up. And I put Jesus is Lord, exclamation point. He sets us free from sin, exclamation point. So when I'm praying for opportunities for God to, to give me to share Jesus, I promise you, I'm definitely not thinking about going into a porta potty to take a leak and having an opportunity there before me, right in my face. And so I took advantage of that opportunity and I gave the message of Jesus right there. So now that any time that everybody, anybody uses that porta potty, goes in there and takes a leak, they're going to be staring at what uh, that person wrote and what I wrote because it, it's right there at eye level as they're taking a leak, they can't miss it. So thank you, Lord, for that opportunity, and I pray that many seeds are planted and watered, and that you bring increase, yes, even from the porta potty. So Paul, and this is my whole point, Paul is not just sitting around Athens and taking a break. He does not do that. He walks around Athens, he's taking a look, he's taking mental notes of what's going on and what he sees, and, and so uh, he's going to take advantage of some opportunities. And what he does is he begins talking about Jesus, and he's going to have a, a debate with some Epicureans and Stoic philosophers. And, and I would have loved to have heard those conversations, those discussions. But um, uh, I'm going to read you something from uh, a website called BibleResources.info. And the title of the column is, Who are the Philosophers, Stoics, and Epicureans in Acts 17? Uh, and this is what they say. The Epicureans and the Stoics belong to two Greek schools of philosophy with popular, uh, very popular with the common people because they taught how to achieve pleasure and happiness despite one's circumstances. So, you know, they, they thought they were doing some good. The Epicureans believed everything in the world was made up of atoms and that everything was governed by physical laws. And the best way to achieve happiness and pleasure, because, you know, that's what, I mean, let's face it, that's what people claim that they're looking for every day. I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. Well, 
this is what uh, the Epicureans believed. Here's how you could achieve happiness. They said the best way to achieve happiness and pleasure was to submit to these laws of nature, live simply and virtuously without burdening oneself with worldly cares and do everything to avoid physical pain. Well, if you can do that, good luck. Because physical pain is not fun. And it says, though they figured uh, the gods, little g, gods did exist some, somewhere far away, uh, they were the, the little gods were somewhere far away and religion was not important theirs was a practical search for happiness the stoics on the other hand believed that god was everywhere in nature in the universe and in man and therefore to live in harmony with the universe one should strive toward godly perfection of character and of submission to the divine will this was achieved through virtuous living and self-control which you know which is interesting because self-control is is actually a fruit of the spirit in galatians 3 it says man conquered the world by conquering himself evil happened when man allowed passions to control him whereas the epicureans believed that pleasure and happiness were the ultimate end for the stoics virtue wisdom and goodness toward every living thing enabled the individual to reach perfect union with this pantheistic or universal presence that governed all <clears throat> so here's what luke says in verse 18 of acts chapter 17 it says, when he told them about Jesus and the resurrection, when Paul tells these Epicureans and these Stoics about Jesus and the resurrection, they said, what's this babbler trying to say with these strange ideas he's picking up? And others said, he seems to be preaching about some foreign gods. So Paul literally blows their mind by telling them that God actually put on flesh. That's what he said. He, he sees these statues to these to these, all these gods, and Paul says, you know, you got all these statues to these gods, but the, the one that you should be talking about and praying to is this one here on the end that says, to the unknown God. He says, I want to tell you about that God. That, that God is the one who created the universe. He created all these things. And matter of fact, he loves us so much that his son died on the cross for our sins. He was the Messiah sent to pay the price for our, our penalty for our sins. That's the one that you need to be to, to, to be uh, uh, picking up on and studying about. And so uh, they're calling Paul a babbler, but you know Paul's, they're saying, you know, where did he pick this, these strange ideas up? And, and if, we, if you remember when we was in Acts, I believe it was Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9, Paul had the personal encounter with Jesus. He was knocked off his horse. The light shined around him. He heard the voice of Jesus. He has a conversation with Jesus. So it's not that Paul picked these things up from somebody or some place. He experienced them for himself. He was a persecutor of Christians. He killed people for a living, put them in prison because of their faith. And now this persecutor has now become the persecuted. He has experienced Jesus firsthand. And see, that, that, that's, that's the challenge that we, we, that we face. If we have experienced Jesus for ourselves, if His blood has washed away our sins and He has changed our lives, then we should be sharing with people what Jesus has done for us, the difference that He's made in our lives. It's, it's literally that simple. Don't complicate things. You know what God has done for you in your life. Share that. Share that message with people that you know. Share what Jesus has done, the difference he has made in your life. And let God worry about the rest. It's not complicated. Don't make it complicated. And that's what Paul just, he went around to these places telling people this message of how Jesus Christ had changed his life. And then he would use the power of the Holy Spirit to back it up. Well, we have the Holy Spirit. Not only do we have the Holy Spirit, but we have the Word of God. To share with people and so Paul preaches to them and, and you can read it on your own in Acts chapter 17 verses 19 through 31 and he tells them that God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him for he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he, approved, he proved everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. I mean, the message has not changed. God's already proved what he has to prove. 
He has sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried and he was resurrected on the third day. And at one point in time, God overlooked people's ignorance, but no longer. You know, you may cho choose to live your own life and do your own thing. And, and you say, well, God's not going to send me to hell. You're right. God's not going to send you to hell. You're going to choose to go there because the, of your actions and the way you choose to live your life. And if it does not line up with the Word of God, then there's a price to pay for that. If our sins are not forgiven, there's a price to pay for that. We, you know, we are bought with a price. We are not our own. Jesus gave Himself for us. He has paid the price for us. We can either choose to live for Him or live for ourselves. But there is a price that comes with that. Here, here's what I want to end this podcast with. Just because Paul was waiting for Timothy and Silas to arrive in Athens, he didn't just sit around. He was active for God. He was active for Jesus. He could have took a break, and it would have been a great time to take a break for this man who had been beaten, who had been stoned, who had been chased from city to city, people wanting to kill him, but he did not do that. He looked for opportunities to share Jesus, and because he did, there were some converts made right there in Athens while he was waiting for Silas and Timothy to arrive. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, Paul writes, Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Friend, the, first of all, the Lord wants you to give Him your life. He wants you to be saved. But if you've already made that decision, what he wants you to do is to plant seed and water seed so that he can bring the increase. Are you just sitting idly by doing nothing, wasting your time, doing your own thing? You know, does, does TV have your time? Does the internet have your time? Does your phone have your time? Does your job have your time? Do your kids have your time? Do your animals have your time? Does yard mowing have your time? All these things, grocery, all these things have our time but what about god how much time are we spending with god and not only that how much time are we spending sharing the gospel the death burial and resurrection of jesus how are we taking advantage of the opportunities that god set right before our very eyes are we even taking advantage of those opportunities i hope so because we have the hope that people need and his name is Jesus. I challenge you today, go out and share Jesus with somebody. Look for the opportunity, pray for the opportunity, and take advantage of the opportunity and opportunities that God lays before your very eyes. Take advantage, act on them, and God will bless you and God will bring the increase. God bless you. Keep grinding. Thank you for joining us today on the Grind It Podcast. Please feel free to share this podcast with your friends and your family so that they too can be encouraged by the power of God's Word. If you have any comments or questions, just email them to thegrinditpodcast at gmail.com. Remember, keep grinding and God bless you.